Hi there and welcome to a video on microeconomics and in this session we're going to take a look at a, quite a common exam style question which is the old the age-old issue of whether price discrimination by businesses uh, is uh, a way of enhancing or damaging economic welfare. So price discrimination of course is when businesses charge different prices to different groups of consumers uh, for essentially the same product uh, the key is that when a firm is doing this, it's trying to separate the market out. Instead of charging one uniform profit maximizing price, it will engage in dynamic pricing. Uh, first degree discrimination, you charge the maximum price consumers are willing to pay. So things like market haggling in a, in a street store uh, could be an example of moving towards that. With second degree discrimination, you charge a different price depending on the quantity of a product that consumers buy. So for example, you might get a better deal on your mobile phone contract, on your tariff, if you if you buy a monthly tariff which offers you more data, slightly lower cost of, uh, of data per month. Uh, third, third degree discrimination is where you, you split the market into clearly separate groups. You're charging different prices, depending basically on a, on a particular market segment. It could be age, it could be the income of the group, it could be the time of use, Crucially, it's the elasticity of demand for different groups. So cinemas are, of course, masters of the art, charging off-peak and peak prices, charging different prices for the same film in the same screen for a, an adult, a child, a senior citizen, a group discount for a family of four, etc. Schools may offer uh, free places, uh, and universities free places through the bursary schemes, etc. Again, a form of price discrimination. Hairdressers might offer a discount Based on age, students and OAPs might get a discount off their, off their hairdressing fee. So price discrimination is extremely common. Most firms that have price setting power will engage in some form at some time in price discrimination. The key issue is the, well, one of the main issues is whether price discrimination has an effect, has an impact on economic efficiency and economic welfare. This is a moment, this is a chance just to quickly revise three types of efficiency that we're going to think about. Allocative efficiency, making best use of resources, is when um, suppliers produce what is demanded by consumers. They're meeting their needs at a price that reflects the marginal cost of supplying the product, the cost of the next user. Dynamic efficiency is essentially a, a catch-all phrase for changes in the quality of goods and services, quality changes in the choice available changes in the, the pace of innovation uh, in a market. Uh, productive efficiency is when a firm, a supplier, uh, gets an output to market at the lowest feasible average or unit cost. That is normally where average cost equals marginal cost, either in the short term, the intersection of MC and AC, or in the long run, uh, when the firm gets close to its minimum efficient scale. So a question on price discrimination should always try, if it can, to make some comment about the likely effects on economic efficiency. And at a basic level, the, the allocative efficiency point is reached where a market operating freely reaches an equilibrium point where supply meets demand. That's going to maximise the area, combined area of consumer and producer surplus, which uh, some exam boards call community surplus, the combined consumer and producer surplus, in this case equal to QRS. At the market equilibrium price, consumer and producer surplus is maximised. So at this output, a price equals marginal cost, welfare is maximised. That, of course, is in the absence of externalities. Well, one type of price discrimination is third degree. This is where a supplier splits the market up into two or more, often many, separate groups or segments. In this situation, we face one group with a fairly elastic demand with uh, average revenue and marginal revenue shown, uh, they have a relatively low willingness to pay and the profit maximizing price is P1, where MC cuts MR. Contrast this with a second group of consumers with a higher willingness to pay, perhaps a higher level of income, and crucially their demand is less price sensitive. I've drawn the demand curve deliberately as more inelastic in relative terms compared to the left hand side. Now, if we assume that the cost of supplying to both groups is constant, notice that I've drawn the marginal cost curve as a straight line, a constant cost assumption. 
then we can show that the profit maximum uh, profit maximizing price on the left hand side is p1 for the group with a more inelastic demand it's p2 a significant rise in price indeed if if this firm charged p2 to both groups then the group on the left hand side would effectively be priced out of the market now in this situation the firm can make higher profits so with an elastic demand consumers are responsive to small price changes you charge them a lower price p1 but the price is still above cost and therefore you can make a profit there with the right hand group the elasticity demand is lower there's a greater willingness and ability to pay effective demand is higher and again you can charge a higher price essentially extract some consumer surplus and turn it into profit another type of discrimination is where in part the the difference in price is a reflection of cost and spare capacity so-called peak and off-peak pricing and off-peak times demand is relatively low and lots of suppliers will have spare capacity so cinemas for example will be emptier during the daytime likewise restaurants and, uh, and other suppliers so the profit maximizing off-peak price is lower compared to the peak time in the market where there's a much higher level of demand which itself is more inelastic uh, and therefore you can charge a higher peak price in part because the marginal cost of supply is assumed to be higher you might for example have to pay some overtime to staff at peak times or employ some extra uh, labor uh, temporary labor perhaps to cope with peak time demand so there's an example of a different price in the market depending on time and depending on capacity and in part depending on cost so to what extent does price discrimination act to enhance to improve economic welfare well one argument is uh, that there is a potential for what's called cross subsidy so for example uh, consumers of pharmaceutical products in rich countries in high income nations might pay a higher price for their painkillers or their uh, for their routine drugs arthritis drugs for example they pay a higher price than consumers would pay in a, in a lower income country perhaps an emerging developing nation in that sense pharmaceutical companies might be cross subsidizing an activity that ultimately brings a social benefit so think for example free bus travel for pensioners or think uh, you know cheaper rail travel for for younger people which aids their mobility of labor and in theory of course has a social social dimension as well second point is that dynamic pricing by businesses is quite a good way of making more efficient use of spare capacity so businesses might well use dynamic pricing to for example cut the price of food after food has passed its uh, best buy date the co-op has announced a plan to sell baked beans and tin soups and uh, packets of crisps and pasta for 10p after they've passed their best best before date and environmentalists would make a case for saying that's a good strategy for reducing the amount of waste which has a social benefit crucially uh, price discrimination does allow businesses to bring new consumers into the market people who at a normal price would effectively be priced out of the market and there's a case for saying that's that's quite important particularly in areas such as education in healthcare and in in products which have a high level of consumer need fourth point from a welfare and efficiency perspective is that price discrimination is a strategy to make more revenue and ultimately more profit but profit has a purpose producer surplus can have a key role to play for example in funding in research and development uh, which could ultimately be a stimulus to invention and innovation leading to dynamic efficiency gains so i think there's quite a, a coherent and substantial case to be made for dynamic pricing of course you need to evaluate valuation is really critical and here are some arguments which challenge and counter the views that i've just gone through the first point is that for most consumers with dynamic pricing although some people do pay less than the price then for most people that's the paying uh, a price well above the marginal cost of selling to them so particularly groups with an inelastic demand uh, they are paying paying more and it's not necessarily allocatively efficient in terms of price even if you get a higher output extraction of consumer surplus of course has turned into higher producer surplus and profit well fine that can uh, that can fund innovation but of course it depends if companies are paying paying their taxes 
Uh, there's a big debate at the moment about tax avoidance. And firms don't necessarily use profits to fund investment. Oftentimes, big corporations, rich with cash from dynamic pricing, uh, buy back the shares of their shareholders to improve the return to the equity stakeholders. Price discrimination can also be a, a barrier to entry. So some firms might deliberately cut their prices for certain groups as a way of perhaps preventing the profitable entry of new firms. And there's a case for saying that price discrimination is one way by which monopoly producers can reinforce, can cement their dominant position in the market, which ultimately, if you think about the standard theory of economics, uh, monopoly power leads to higher prices than there would be if there was a fully competitive market. So there are some arguments against. Crucially, we've got lots of notes, lots of revision quizzes and videos on price discrimination, monopoly, economic efficiency and welfare, and many other topics. Head over to tutor2u.net economics for our daily blogs and our, our, our resources added every single day to help your studies. Okay, thanks for joining in on this video on price discrimination and economic welfare.